Hey everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 4 Episode 18 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this anime really are. Called it in the last episode, and there was a comment actually on the last video from CZ1 that got me thinking. He has a really good point. Not all the Medusas are the same age because the one on the island worked just fine. How did that one have battery and none of these do? Where were all of these made and stored before piling up into a pyramid in the Amazon rainforests? Because someone fabricated these and they have a lot of diamonds. I just, I find it really hard to believe that no one on earth knew that someone was making all of these devices and they had all this money and resources and time to... How did nobody on earth find that suspicious? <laughs> I used to take stuff apart all the time as a kid. In fact, I built my first iPhone actually way back. I think this was the iPhone 4S. Whenever, I think, yeah, 4S, that's when Siri first came out. I bought a couple of broken iPhones just off of eBay, and I had thought if the only thing broken with this phone, for example, is the LCD and the digitizer, and if every other component is functioning, all I have to do is replace those and I have a fully functioning phone. Well, when that phone finally came in, I discovered that there's a lot more broken with it than advertised eBay. I ended up buying a new battery, LCD digitizer, and a few of the frames to secure the electrical components in place, and then I got a SIM card and I finally got my first iPhone. <laughs> Quality control when making a lot of the same product means a quality engineer will randomly pick one off of an assembly line or request samples and examine those for any quality issues. If the issues are within tolerance, meaning they're not so problematic to the point where the customer will return them, we are good to go. The opposite of that would be a product like Ferrari. Because there's so few Ferraris made, quality engineers will check each individual vehicle before they get to their customer. And this... It is not realistic to do that for iPhones, for example, because there are so many iPhones being made every single day. The quality engineer has to take just a few off the assembly line or get a few samples from Apple, and then you assume that the rest are all clones of each other. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> stealth technology is really cool, and what stealth means in this context is reducing their RCS, or radar cross-section. Stealth aircraft are designed with flat, slanted surfaces and round edges to deflect radar waves away from the radar source, rather than reflecting them directly back. They avoid right angles and sharp edges that can reflect radar waves, and they use smooth, continuous surfaces to reduce the radar returns. The B-2 Spirit's flying wing design and the F-117 Nighthawk's faceted surfaces are examples of how the shape is used to minimize radar detection. Another method is using RAM, radar absorbent materials. Stealth planes are coated with RAM, such as carbon black or ferrite particles, that absorb radar waves and convert them into heat. This absorption minimizes the radar signal that bounces back to the radar receiver, making the aircraft much harder to detect. That is wild. They converted this whole global weapon into a stealth ship? I don't know if I'm the only one that noticed this. I just replayed this clip a couple of times, and if Kohaku is looking closer at something, then opening her eyes wider like that is actually gonna make it worse. Shouldn't she be squinting at the diamonds instead of lifting her eyelids all the way open? Yo, 
これで瓶の中に空気は残ってないはずじゃあやるぞ。Tungsten filaments are the most common because it's the element on the periodic table with the highest melting point. The light bulbs that we purchase for our homes don't have any air inside of them, which is odd to think about, but that's why the light bulb exploded in this case. Even with tungsten's melting point of 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 3,400 degrees Celsius, the air around the bulb is heating up as the tungsten filament heats up, and that will create such a high pressure inside the light bulb it explodes. Light bulbs work because the air is vacuumed out, and that way there's nothing to heat up around the tungsten filament, so they last. Pretty long actually, and they're much better at producing heat rather than light. The light of a light bulb is actually a byproduct of the increased heat of the tungsten. When I was in high school, one of our physics teachers had posed this question to us about the dark sucker theory, and what it's saying is that light bulbs aren't actually producing light, they're just sucking in the darkness around them. And for High school version of me, it blew my mind because I was thinking, holy crap, is that why light bulbs don't work as well when it's already a lit room and they work way better in a dark room? And it just, it actually messed with a lot of the class for longer than we wanted to. And about five to ten minutes later is when someone raised their hand and said, but doesn't it produce a whole lot of heat? How do you account for that? And that's actually how the dark sucker theory was. This is a real theory, by the way. I, like an actual scientist pushed this forward, and another scientist came around and said, okay, well, due to the heat index and all of this, this was a real thing at one point in time. It's just something fun to mess with people. Oh. <laughs> 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 The first thing I'm going to say here is your girl will not tell the difference between a lab made and a natural diamond on her wedding ring. There are two ways of making these lab grown diamonds. Senku is using the CVD method, which stands for chemical vapor deposition. The CVD process involves placing a diamond seed in that vacuum chamber and then heating it up to 800 degrees Celsius. A carbon rich gas, usually methane actually, is introduced into the chamber along with a plethora of other gases. These gases are then ionized into plasma due to the increased heat and then they release carbon atoms. These carbon atoms will deposit onto the diamond seed, causing it to grow layer by layer. Layer. Over the next several weeks, the diamond grows into a much larger crystal, and I am now just speculating here because I'm. I, I thought it makes one diamond that you once repeating this process over and over again, it just gets larger and larger. Is、uh, if someone in the comments understands this process better than me, then please clarify for us. Is the reason that there are multiple little diamonds here because they didn't start with a seed? And this is just, I, I'm not sure why there's a bunch of little ones. I thought it would result in just one little bit larger one. The other method is HPHT, which is high pressure, high temperature. And that process is mimicking what's happening in the Earth's mantle where diamonds are naturally born. I really like that the Corn City crew applied the scientific method without any scientists around to create these diamonds because Senku's right. Scientists don't have a patent on science. Anyone can recreate any experiment given that they have the tools to do so. And I I'm really impressed and happy that they figured it out without calling Senku when things went wrong. And they, they really, they're scientists here. Some of the greatest innovations come from the least expected origins. For example, this woman was a dazzling figure in 1940s Hollywood. In her downtime between movie shoots, she kept notebooks full of technical sketches and mechanical ideas. During World War II, she teamed up with a composer to design a device that could prevent radio controlled torpedoes from being jammed. Their invention used rapidly changing frequencies to make communication secure, an idea decades ahead of its time. Today, that same frequency hopping principle forms the backbone of technologies that we use, including Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. Once called the most beautiful woman in the world, but now recognized as one of the most influential tech innovators of the 20th century, her name is Hedy Lamar. 